Now that we've set up some levels, we need to start thinking about how we edit those levels and change settings on those levels. So I'm going to go back to my West Elevation here in the project browser. And I've added the third floor level there. But what about if we want to edit that and we want to make some changes? The thing to do here is to zoom in nice and tight like that and see what we're doing. Because as soon as I click on a level, all of the editing tools kick in. Now you'll notice there there's a 3D setting. That switches to either the 3D or the 2D extents. I don't want to switch to 2D extents. I want to leave that as 3D so it works with my levels in the 3D model. But let's have a look at some of these tools now. I'm just going to drag slightly across by using pan there. Now I did show you some of these tools earlier. This one here, for example, that switches on all of the level name, marker, finish floor level, and so on. The FFL that comes up, the finish floor level, this little marker here, is actually editable. So you'll see that's 9, and that's 9 because it's 9 above 0 level. If I change that to 12, let's say, and do an enter, it disappeared. Why does it disappear? Because I've now told it it's 12 above finish floor level, which we don't want. We want to change that again. So I'll change that back now to 9 above finish floor level. 9 meters, like so, and it updates again. So that's one way of editing, and you're editing using finish floor level above ground level. So ground level would be zero. It might not be zero. You might have a basement. You might have a substructure as well. It does vary. It depends on what is set up within your project in real life, what your survey units are, what your survey settings are. Now, the other way of editing your level, you saw it earlier, in fact, is this way, editing the temporary dimension. Let's change that to 3,500. And you'll notice this is in millimetres, not metres as well. Again, all due to the settings in the project. And you've set those up by using your RTE file, your Revit template project. So if I press Enter, that updates. You can see the finished floor level update and so on. Now you'll notice this is locked at the moment. Now what it does is it's an alignment constraint. So if I unlock that, what happens there now is that's unlocked to finished floor level. So if I go in there now and change that to 10,500, it still updates, and it will do. But it's just not constrained by anything else, like the finished floor level 000 down here on the ground floor. So all you're doing there is unconstraining it from these other floor levels. So you could edit it if you want to in any which way. My suggestion is don't unlock it. Always leave it locked. It's useful because it's constrained to other objects. You just leave it unless you have to unlock it. So that's how you edit your levels and modify your levels. Now you'll notice here, I've still got a lock here. There's still an alignment constraint here. So if I click there like that, there is also a constraint there as well. And the constraint is based on the finished floor level because it's tying the finished floor level down to the ground level. So you've got it at both ends because the level, if you think about it, needs to be horizontal unless you don't want it to be horizontal. That one's fixed, but if I click and drag here, like so, can you see it's still locked? I can drag that along that way, and it stays there. It stays level. That's the best bit about it. But what I'll do now is I'll just constrain that along to there, line it in again, and you'll see it's locked again, and it's constrained itself back. That's all it does. It's just constraining itself to the finished floor level, but also the other levels, so that everything's neat and tidy. I'll just hit escape there. I want to switch that one off this end. So I'll just click on that level there and switch that setting off there. Hit escape there. And we'll change this back to what we want it to be, which in this case is going to be the 3000, like that. Hit escape to deselect. And there's our third floor. So that's how you modify your levels in Revit structure. And you can see it's an all encompassing thing. When you place a level, you can edit it at the same time. And that's one of the major benefits of Revit in general, is when you're placing components, levels, grids, doesn't matter what it is, it's all editable at the same time as placing. You don't have to place it and then go back and edit it. You can do it all in like a one-stop shop kind of environment.